next one, okay? And again, now we are going to look in terms of problem solving, not in terms of syntax. Okay, syntax you will get. Four ints have been provided as an input. Return true is the sum of any two of them is a power of two. First question. Hi, Pawan. Uh, welcome to the class. Uh, and uh, okay, so before going into this, uh, you see, I think now this class is a mix of some old and some new people, right? Uh, we have quite a few people who have joined from another batch. And from our batch also, the people who are going to continue are the ones who have been able to give the exam successfully. Okay? So uh, let me, for those who have joined new, I'll give a brief uh, introduction of myself. Uh, my name is Vidya, and uh, I am doing this TriSec class for the very, this is my first batch actually at TriSec. Uh, I've been in IT for almost 15 years. I was, I've been in IT since 99. I've been in Java development since 2002. My last job was at uh, Cognizant Technology Solutions. I was a senior manager there. Now I have basically taken a break from my career for a couple of years for basically for, uh, you know, for work-life balance reasons to spend time with the children, etc. And I'm doing this as a part-time thing because I enjoy teaching and also I want to remain in touch with the subject. Okay? And it gives me an opportunity to use whatever experience I have already had in the field. Okay? So anyway, that's, that's about me. Now coming back to the um, coming back to the problem at hand, okay? So return true is the sum of any two of them is a power of two, okay? Return true is the sum of any two numbers is a power of two. Now we know our input, which is four integers, and we are saying that the sum of any two is a power of two. First of all, how do you find out if any number is a power of two? What's the algorithm for that? No, not divisible by two. Six is divisible two. That doesn't mean it's a power of two. So whenever you do like two, raise, It's a square power, okay? So like Niranjan said, it's a square power. So if it is 2 raised to 3, it is going to be 2 into 2 into 2 equals 8. So 8 is a power of 2, okay? On the other hand, 6 is not a power of 2, okay? If I do 2 raised to 6 equals 2, 2 is a 4, 4 2 is a 8, 2 is a 6, 2 is a 36, 2 is a 64. So 64 is a power of 2, 8 is a power of 2. On the other hand, 6 is not a power of 2. Okay? Because it does not give you a 2. Okay? So first thing you need to know is if the number is a power of 2 or not, just be divisible. So then, algorithm wise, now I have a number. Okay? Given a number, how do I know if it is a power of 2 or not? Given a number, how do I know if it is a power of 2 or not? It is a power of 2 if I can keep dividing by 2 without a remainder. Make sense? It's not, so I have to keep on dividing by 2. So for example, if a number 6, 6 divided by 2 equals 3, okay? 3 divided by 2, 3 divided by 2 is going to give me a remainder of 1, so this is not power of 2. Make sense? Okay, now let's come to 8. 8. 8 divided by 2 will give you 4. 4 divided by 2 is going to give you 2. And 2 divided by 2 is going to give you 1 with a remainder of 0. Since you are not getting a remainder, then 8 is a power of 2. Clear? So keep on dividing until the number becomes a 0 and, you know, or the, you know, basically the remainder is a 0 and the a quotient is a 1. All right? So just to find out the power. So now I am breaking this into multiple. We are only addressing this part. 
is a power of 2. I am only addressing this part is a power of 2, not more than that. So, in order to find out if a number is a power of 2 or not, the function, okay, with the power of 2. While number is greater than 0, keep on dividing, keep on dividing. If the remainder is 0, return true, else return false, okay. Make sense? So far, I know how to find out if a number is a power of 2, okay. Now, let us go to the remaining part of this problem, which is return true if the sum of any two of them. Now, how many numbers we have in as, in, as input? Four numbers, okay. So, when you say the sum of any two of them, then how many such combinations I can have? How many combinations do I need to check? I have four numbers as an input. How many combinations I need to check? Six combinations. So, let us see what those six combinations are, okay. So, the numbers are A, B, C, D. Excuse me one minute. The numbers are A, B and C and D. Sum of any two. Sum of any two could be A plus B. A plus B. It could be A plus C. A plus C. That is one set of combinations. B plus C. B plus D. Is another possibility. C plus D. Is another possibility. Anything missed out here? So, we are looking at six possible combinations. The sum of any of these, if it is a power of 2, and then we have to return a 2, okay. So, then in order to uh, in order to implement this, we have to check each of these sums and then check if each of the sums is a power of 2 or not. So, in order to implement that, this is how you do it. Initialization is two. Termination is Sanket says n. Shashank says less than equal to number. I will wait, think and everybody wait. Anurag says, Kumar says infinite, but there has to be some point when you have to, yeah, I agree with infinite until result is equal to nth prime, okay, Aditya had the best way to express it, so until result equal to nth prime, so you have to understand, this looks like a single loop, you know, you are actually tracking two counters in this loop, you are not tracking one number, you are tracking two numbers in this loop, okay, so there is two, um, two basically iterations going on. 
the first iteration is the counter itself. So suppose I put a number as 10, okay? Then I have 1, 1, let's put it as 8, okay? Suppose my input n is equal to 8. If n is equal to 8, okay? So n equals 8. Then 1 I'm tracking is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Along with that, I am also tracking another one, counter. Along with that, I am tracking something else. Can you tell me what is the other thing I am tracking? What's after 23? Does anyone know? Thirty nineteen. Okay, sorry. Then twenty-three. Thirty-one. Twenty-nine. Okay. Okay. So basically, I left out three. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, so basically, in this particular problem, right, given a number n as an input, return the value of the nth prime number. It's slightly deceptive. I'm missing 13 also. Wow. <laughs> so I guess we're good now. All right. So basically, what this is saying is that even though, if you read the problem carefully, you will realize that you are maintaining two counters in this. You are maintaining a counter which is an index. This is an index. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 is an index. And the other counter you are maintaining is the actual prime numbers themselves. So the prime number of index 1 is 2. Prime number at index 2 is 3. Prime number at index of 4 is 7. Prime number at index 7 is 17. This much clear? Okay. So typically when you are maintaining two counters, Okay, and one is an index and the other is an actual counter, you end up writing a for loop within a for loop. So the first for loop will be to count from 1 to 8. The second count, uh, second uh, for loop will be to count from starting 2 to the nth prime number, which is going to be at the index of 8. Okay, so I'm going to reach 1 and then say loop find the next prime number, which is at 1. Then I'll move to 2 and say find the next prime number and index it at 2. Then I move to 3 and I say find the next prime number, index it at 3. Then I move to 4 and say find the next prime number greater than 5 and index it at 4. Alright? So when you write this loop, you will write it as from 1 to n last prime. Okay, in this case, I'm including the prime number 1 as always 1. So what I'm saying is, starting with the second index, check if the i is a prime number, and if it is the same as the, if the counter that I'm maintaining is the same as the input, then return i, okay? So first I have 2. Is a prime number is a 2? And what is the counter? Okay, counter is the same as the index that I maintained earlier. Okay, so if it is, um, if it is a prime number, increase the index, okay? Then we will go back and check 3. Is 3 a prime number? Okay, then index is equal to 3. Then we check 4. Is 4 a prime number? No. Move on. 
Then we checked five. Is five a prime number? Increment the index. Is six a prime number? No, it's not. Seven a prime number? Yes. Increment the index. The minute you reach the index, the same as whatever is passed as the input, that is when you return the actual prime number. Solution makes sense to everyone.